Our next speaker is Alain Sauvat. Alain works in the Institut Gustave Roussy, a big chief in France. And he is the head of the BioCell Bio platform. And the main work is uh, focusing in the HCSSA and software development for uh, system biology. So good morning, everybody. Well, first, like anybody, I would like to thank the committee for giving me the opportunity to give this talk. And I would also like to thank the audience for uh, basically waking up to come this morning. Um, so like um, Natalia said, uh, I am a research engineer working in Institut Gustave Roussy, uh, a small team working among the big team of UMR 1138. Uh, directed by Guido Kramer, and today I'm going to present you the, the HTS, so high throughput screening platform uh, I am working on, and one of its application, uh, which is the automated assessment of cell viability. Uh, so first of all, let me talk really briefly uh, about my team. So my team is directed by the professor Guido Kramer. So for those who might not know him, I don't think this might be the case. Um, I'll make some advertisement. So he has been uh, ranked at the most cited other um, uh, upon a study made, realized between 2007 and 2013. And uh, this is a team that works in a really wide range of domains. Uh, but the name is apoptosis, cancer, and humidity. So you can imagine this covers a lot, a lot of fields. Um, the, this team is kind of big because we are around between 40 and 50 people. And among those, there is a small team, smaller team directed by Oliver Kep, uh, which is the biocell platform, which is in IGR. And among this team, I am the last one uh, in charge of um, running the high throughput screening platform. And as you can see here, Oliver Cup is also one of the most cited authors in Europe, as well as two other members of the lab. Well, that's all for advertisement. Um, here is the really interesting thing, the uh, high throughput screening platform. So as you can see, we have a big space for only seven people of us. And there is a part dedicated to cell culture and cell preparation. Um, the, uh, the room in which we can find the real high throughput screening platform and the part which is dedicated to data handling, which is really an important part of the platform also. Um, so this platform includes different devices and is basically, it's based on uh, microscopy, epifluorescent microscopy. So we've got three epifluorescent microscopes, the uh, XML from molecular devices, which is represented here today, and uh, other readout system, we've got also an automated fax, which is a cyan ADP uh, from Beckman, coupled to an hypersite. Uh, this is the rated arena, and now let's talk about the automation part. Uh, we've got a biomech FXP from Beckman also, with doing all the pipetting steps to uh, incubators, of course, to incubate cells, and um, a plate hotel to load anything you need. And all these devices are linked together via a motorman, which is an industrial robot, uh, which can move in six dimension. Yeah, this is possible, six dimension. And it can really go from any device to uh, another. So I will show you some pictures anyway to be more precise about how it looks like. So here you have got a view of a sterile compound management area because this biomech um, robot is um, under a hood, a PSM level two, which can allow us to do any uh, sterile experiment you would need to do manually. And uh, here you have a view of the shielded area because this motor mine is kind of really uh, strong and powerful. So you might not uh, uh, want to be inside this shielded area when it's moving. So there is a high level of security to avoid any danger and problem. 
Um, here you've got the automated flow cytometer coupled to the hypersite, the three uh, epifluorescent microscope from molecular devices. Um, and one thing I'm really keen on, the IT which is linked to that. So like I said, our readout system is mainly based on images, microscopic images, uh, high quality, uh, meaning that like one image is in 10 megabytes. So if you can imagine if you run a screen uh, with uh, hundreds of plates, 384 well plates with four view fields per well, with three dice, it generated thousands, millions of images. So you need a really, really strong IT backbone. And basically what we got here is four servers. Um, one is dedicated to calculation, because these images of course have to be analyzed, and uh, which contain an SQL database in which all the, the, the metadata um, are stored. Um, this server with a RED5 configuration, uh, meaning that it's really a high level of security, you cannot lose data easily, uh, to store the images. And these two Dell servers we've got here are uh, just for storage and backup. And we've got in global uh, almost 100 terabytes uh, of data space. So to be more precise, uh, I want to show you the data fluxes which are generated from this uh, platform. So mainly we are generating data, like I said, from the molecular devices, uh, microscopes. So it generates both images and metadata link to these images, the size, uh, which plate, which assay, etc. And all this metadata are stored in this SQL database where when this um, these images are stored on this server. After this, um, the images which are stored need to be analyzed to generate cell by cell data. And for this, we are using uh, the PowerCore uh, software, which is a great software which allows to analyze this image in a really efficient and quick way. And this PowerCore um, software is using the capacity of the calculation server to have really to generate this data really fast, and the cell-by-cell -cell data, which are generated upon image segmentation and analysis, are stored again in the SQL database. And from this database, which is really a highly secure way to store the data, uh, we can directly retrieve it on a workstation analysis, basically a powerful PC, uh, with using R, the R uh, software analysis, which is a free programmation language to do statistics and a lot of other things. And from this uh, database query, once we get the cell-by-cell -cell data, you can generate all that you want. Publication, basically, figures for publication in a really, really efficient and fast way. And after this analysis has been made, we move these images, which are stored in RED5 configuration, really not to lose it while we're analyzing them, uh, to the Dell server, and once, so in that case, they're still accessible from the workstation, and once, uh, after a certain time, when we're not using it anymore, we are backing it up and archiving them on the last Dell server. And regarding the two other readout system, I, I forgot to mention the Spectrumax, which is a simple plate fluorescent reader, um, this data, which are really much taking really less space, are directly stored on the Dell server to be also analyzed using R on this workstation. So this is how the, the data fluxes, uh, the data are stored and, uh, and moved, basically. So this is what, uh, this is how the platform is built. I hope you understood how it works. Basically, I will give you an example, of course, to illustrate this. And uh, here is uh, a, a sampling on the industrial and academic partners with already, we've been already working with. So with GSK, Alix, Biopharma, Aliquid, and of course, in CERN and Gustav Rossi, because we are working directly with them. And Pharma, Margin Tech. Won't forget anybody, anyone. So, I presented you the platform. It's nice, it's beautiful, okay, but how does it work and how, what, what can we do with this beautiful platform? So I will just give you one of the many examples we've been, uh, we've been doing on this platform, which is the assessment of cell viability 
uh, using a triple staining method. So triple staining, the name we give uh, among the team, I will explain you why. So before talking about cell viability, we should all get along about what cell deaths is. Um, and nobody is really agree on the fact what is cell deaths, how can we define cell deaths. But basically in the last decades, all the scientists agree on one fact that one is a cell, once a cell is dead, it loses the membrane integrity. And this, is, this can be easily assessed using a vital dye such as DAPI or PI, which is really commonly used. And most of people in science, when they want to assess cell deaths, they say, okay, you take the exclusion dye, so you're dead or you're living. But more and more people are using two dyes, what I call a 2D analysis, because among the living cells, you can still find cells which are doomed to die. So the cells which are doomed to die, uh, there are two examples of past where when they are activated, meaning that the cell will, will die anyway, but it's still living, is a massive activation of caspases, which, is, which also can be assessed by fax or microscopy, and the loss of the transmitochondrial potential. Um, most of the time people are using, for example, a dioc, which is assessing uh, mitochondrial uh, potential, and PI, to say, okay, we've got these living cells, dying cells, and dead cells. But this is not really accurate, uh, accurate sorry. This is not really accurate, I will show you after. Um, we have chose these three dyes to assess cell viability. So like I mentioned before, uh, there is the DAPI. So DAPI is simply an exclusion dye which is entering the cell when the membrane integrity is lost and is going to the nucleus where it emits uh, blue fluorescence upon UV, UV excitation. Uh, after this, um, we are also using the dioc, uh, the dioc um, dye, which is spontaneously entering into the cell and accumulating into the mitochondria uh, by the driving force of uh, the, the, the mitochondria. So once you have lost this driving force, this potential in the mitochondria, you lose the signal of uh, dioc, and a pound stress, of course. And the Yopro is a dye which allows to assess caspases activation. Yopro is only entering into the cell uh, through panixin channels. And these panixin channels are, uh, are activating by, uh, by the caspase free, the activated version of caspase free. And when this panixin channel activated, the Yopro is gonna enter, get inside the nucleus, and you will get a signal from the Yopro. So why using three dyes instead of two? I'm moving to my next slide where I show you on the left a simple uh, 2D analysis. So basically you've got DAPI and DIOC. And you can see an example of what you can see in different lot of publications as you've got the healthy populations, so DIOC positive, healthy mitochondria, which is working like hell, and uh, DAPI low, it's alive, and dying, they have lost the mitochondrial potential, but they keep, uh, they keep excluding DAPI, meaning that the membrane is still uh, integrate. And the dead cells, which are DAPI positive. And we've been realizing when we have added Yopro that this population that you uh, can cluster as a healthy cells was Yopro positive, meaning that it was not healthy at all because there were already caspases activation. So these three dyes allow for a really accurate uh, assessment of cell viability. Uh, so we have decided to use this three dye. We have shown that it was necessary to really have accurate fashion. And now we had to implement this method on our platform. And we needed to, to find protocol which is as simple as possible. The reason is that when you want to do eye throughput, you need to be simple because it's taking time to go back and forth to a device, to the incubator and stuff. And you won't be able, because this is a living cell assessment with no fixation, you will need to go as fast as possible when you increase the number of plates. So we have designed a really simple um, protocol, which is first a cell seeding, so which is realized by the multi-drop system, which is on the platform. Then this plate will be moved, of course, to the incubator to, um, to, to, to adhere to the plate. We're gonna treat those cells so with your favorite treatment. It's really flexible. Uh, with a biomech, you can do a 
simple chemical treatment with chemotherapeutic agents, or uh, what I call the matrix treatment. I will give you an example, which allow you to, 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 to assess drug-drug interaction, um, siRNA transfection, and so on. And after the cell treatment, the cell will be either detached, if you want to assess the cell that's using a fax assessment, or directly stained, if you want to analyze this via microscopy. So once again, I show you the platform, and I insist on the fact that the method has to be really simple. Because here what you see is all the movements which are done for one plate. If you want to assess one plate from the input, the labware which is in the hotel, to the output, basically the data, you have around, well, I don't remember, I didn't count them, but this is more than 20 movements. And if you simply add the movement plate by plate, it turns impossible to, release, to realize high throughput. And fortunately, we've got um, a software which pilots, uh, which make the link between all these uh, devices, which is called SAMI, which is sold by Beckman, the same, <laughs> uh, which, uh, which optimizes every movement to make this possible, so to increase the number of plates. It will optimize any movement which is realized on the platform. Um, just simply to illustrate, I, I have a short video to show you this famous movement, uh, if it's working. So the plate is loaded from the cytomat, so it doesn't contain anything. Then we, um, uh, sorry, it's kind of shaky. It was done with iPhone 4. It's kind of old, too. It's a handmade video. Uh, so it's removing the lead, and the deleting station is really important. So we're sitting the cell with the multi drop. So I hope there's no epileptic, epileptic people in, the, in this room because I'm sorry <laughs> about it. Uh, incubation. So specifically, this one, I'm, so, I'm really sorry. Uh, I was stressed when I was doing it. Uh, this is not the real speed, uh, basically. Uh, I, I have acceler accelerated it for the, uh, for the video. Here are the treatments. We can see a biomech running. Yeah, it's really shaky. Uh, big size, it's worse. The automated fax assessment, so what you can see, just a needle from the hypersite generate, uh, pipetting inside the 384 well plate. And the loading of the IXM, which is my favorite movement from the Motoman, because it's really, really accurate. Well, that was just to illustrate. I have a second video. I don't know if I have time to run it. But this was just to illustrate the, the, this famous matrix treatment. So when you study drug-drug interaction, you do a matrix of treatment, meaning you do a range of concentration of the first drug and a range of concentration of the second, and then you mix all this concentration. It can, and I, can, I bet you that manually this is something really tough to do uh, in an accurate fashion and, and fastly. And thanks to the Spanate tool of the Biomech, this can be done really fast and uh, easily. So here, this is simply the, interfa the interface of SAMI, which is really easy to use. It works with nodes. You just define what labwares you want. You need, uh, you need tips, you need a source, which is the plate of cells, and you do transfers using this or this uh, tool. This is really uh, simple to use and nice. I, I won't run the video. If you want to see it, uh, you can, I don't know, clap your hands or something. And uh, then, that's done. I mean, we have implemented the method. We have been assessing. We have been staining the, the cells. Now we have generated data, uh, either fax data, if you want fax analysis, or microscopic data. Uh, why doing so? That, in my opinion, this is really uh, a good thing always to uh, multiplex uh, assessments. And here you can see that the fax data and the microscopic data are really close one to, and convenient one to the other. Uh, fax data is really nice because the size of data is really low. Uh, when you generate an FCS file, it's a couple of megabytes. It's, this is nothing for uh, some millions of cells. Uh, but you have no subcellular information. And uh, when you've got adherent cell lines, 
uh, it's, it's dependent on the, uh, on the attributionation of the detachment of the cell. And you need, uh, in the case, particular case of cyan, you need to, um, to, uh, to, to segment the data because it's just generating for one plate one big FCS file. You have to split, and there is a software with the hypersite uh, which is not working, basically. So we've been developing a segmentation software within R to do this well-by-well -well segmentation to generate well-by-well -well data. And the same thing with MetaExpress, we need to segment the images which are generated. So basically, we just distinguish nucleus from cytoplasm. And uh, this is working fine. It's, so the results are dependent on this segmentation. It has to be nicely done. Um, but you don't have the drawback of detachment. And you can sub, uh, subdivide the different compartments of the cell, which is something really great. And you're not only assessing the fluorescence, but also the shape, which is a good thing when you want to assess cell death. For example, uh, if you want to see a small shrink nucleus, which is typical of apoptosis, you will be able to, uh, to, to see it with microscopy. So dealing with data mining, again, we get cell-by-cell -cell data, whether with facts or microscopy. And when you've got cell-by-cell -cell data, you say, OK, what, what, what am I going to do with this cell-by-cell -cell data? So first, you have to reduce. So it's simply a reduction of data. Analyzing data is reducing data. So from the cell-by-cell -cell data, you will get well-by-well -well data applying filters. So filters, what does it mean filters? You will cluster cells. Is it dead, living, debris, well-segmented, not well-segmented? The distribution, is this Gaussian distribution, Poisson distribution, and so on? And like this, you get well-by-well -well data, and then you will group this well-by-well -well data to condition data, check compliance with the raw images, and in the end, get reliable results. This is an example of clustering uh, using microscopic data. So this, thing, this is a tool we've been developing. We've been inspired from facts, meaning in facts, you just gate on debris and cell, you exclude debris, and then you put threshold to say this is diac positive, this is PI positive, etc. And uh, with microscopy, we use the nuclear area and the X intensity to distinguish normal cells from pycnotic, so the small shrink nuclei, and uh, from the debris and badly segmented cells. Uh, so this is basically what you see. Here, you cannot see this is not a nucleus. Here, this is a normal-shaped nucleus, and here, this is a shrink, a pycnotic cell. And you can easily distinguish that. And upon gating on these cells, you can then realize your threshold with your different dyes. And to do so, to do something accurate, because in fact, experiment, you don't see the cell. You just do a gating, saying, OK, I assume this is a positive, this is a negative. And the really great thing with a microscopy and with this SQL structure is that when you have this density plot and you say, OK, where is my threshold? Um, I have plotted, again, the aggregates, the, um, the, the dots, the, cell, um, the cells which correspond to a treatment. And I've simply click on the location of this dot plot. And it's going to surrogate and query the SQL database to retrieve the image which is concerned and the coordinates of the cell in this image which is concerned. And just like this, if you click from the left to the right, here you have got the dioc fluorescence. You will go from no signal here, oxaliplatin treatment, to a uh, short signal, to lower signal, to higher signal. And using this tool, we managed to really distinguish uh, accurate phenotypes, and we checked those phenotypes. This allows us to realize a publication uh, and to distinguish different five main uh, phenotypes using these three dyes from a dead cell to an healthy cell. And these are data coming from microscopy and data coming from, um, from a fax assessment. And I won't get into the details, uh, but this is really, really, really um, um, really close. I mean, the percentages and the number we've been finding are really, really close. Uh, and here you can see this is simply the, um, the quantification of those graphs. So upon treatment with oxaliplatin, which is a drug we like because it's inducing immunogenic cell deaths, uh, a, a type of cell deaths we're working 
uh, in our, we're working on in our lab, Storosporin, which is our favorite apoptosis inducer. Uh, and with, you can see a nice dose response, um, dose response um, curves. And when you add ZVAD, FMK, uh, which is an inhibitor of caspases, you risk you this phenotype you've been inducing with Storosporin, which shows that this method works, basically. Thanks to that, we've been uh, applying, uh, we've been trying to applying this method. We've been showing this is really accurate and, uh, and, and nicely representative of the cell population, the cell status of the population. Uh, we've been, for example, uh, been assessing the interaction between PG34 and cisplatin. So I was talking about before about drug-drug interaction. So basically, we have done this famous matrix, treat, matrix treatment with these two drugs to generate, um, to generate the dose response curves. And thanks to these dose response curves and with these different treatments, we are able to calculate what we call the combination index. And this combination index uh, in, indicates if you, are, um, if you are in synergistic condition or antagonist condition or simple additive. A condition and here you can see on this heat map that when you have green it means you are an hyper additive effect of the two drugs on the right you can simply see a simple uh, cell death assessment um, uh, in s uh, three different cell line the white up and different resistance cell line and we've been assessing uh, the uh, cell viability the cell death after treatment with different chemotherapeutic agents and we've been able like this to make to uh, distinguish differences in those three cell lines. A last application we've been running is kind of the same drug-drug interaction, but we have done this in a time course fashion using different concentrations. So you've got the drug number one, drug number two, and instead of a one point, you have every time different time point. And you can see the uh, decrease of cell viability in time and with increasing concentrations. So, in conclusion, oh, sorry, I think I need to water. In conclusion, I want just to remind that this is a really simple, flexible, and accurate method for assessing the absolute cellular viability. And I want to insist on absolute because most of the case, uh, when you're doing facts assessments, you're calculating percentages. Uh, the, the thing is that when, when you treat the cells, you can have 100% of healthy cells but in the end, you have a drop in the cellular number, uh, which, which show you if this is a cytostatic or really a killing uh, effect. This is really robust because the dye we are using are not new. They're really old. They've been using for decades. They're robust, not prone to degradation. And uh, the staining is kind of fast and reliable. It lasts 20 minutes, but we've been trying 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes at 25 degrees, 37 degrees, and every time we have really the same results. It's easily, it's really easy to scale it up because we started with tubes, in fact, to 96 well plates to go then to 384 well plates. Um, it can be implemented to any platform because we have been implementing on this platform for high throughput fashion, but if you have if you like working with uh, 96 well plates, you can do it manually with no problem and you will earn time compared to tube. Um, and uh, it can be assessed with facts or microscopy if you have a preference for one or the other. And um, the last point I want to insist on is that it's generating a lot of cell-by-cell -cell data. And uh, this virtual analytic platform we've been writing with R, I can give you some data later if you have some question, uh, is really fast, robust, and uh, reliable. So now I'm done with my presentation, so I really thank you all for uh, your uh, attention. If you have any question, I will, I will be pleased to answer it. This presentation is open for questions. Thank you for your nice presentation. I have a question concerning the data analysis process uh, with R. Um, how do you uh, monitor traceability um, between all, uh, throughout all your process? And do you keep link between your final data representation, graphics, 
and the original data or the images. Yeah, totally. That that the great thing uh, with uh, this SQL structure is that everything is linked. So when I was talking about reducing data, you apply filters, but of course you keep a track of these filters you've been applying. So from this final graph results, you can in a couple of minutes go back to the really the cell, uh, the the image inside the plate you're working on, using R and also Meta Express, which is the software uh, from which uh, you 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 launch the analysis. There is a nice plate view, and it's really uh, easy and fast to go back and forth from R to this to this uh, interface. I have a question concerning the cell models. Uh, we perform this kind of analysis on our screening platform, and we receive the criticism that uh, it's quite easy to, to make screening on 2D models, uh, A549 cells uh, stick at the bottom of the plate. Uh, do you plan in the next future to develop other mo um, cell models to, to be used on your platform, like 3D models or things like that? I'm, I'm sorry, I think I didn't understand correctly your question. Uh, you mean which kind of model? My, my question concerned the, the, the focus on the mod cell alarm model. Yeah. I, I suppose that you use adherent cell yeah. models in your system. So do you plan in the next future to use other cell models to perform your screening uh, campaigns? So indeed, this data I've shown you was were done on the uh, A549 cell line, but we've been assessing a lot of different cell lines. Uh, adherent cell line, U2S, MEF, from different uh, organism, human, mice. And we've been trying also to do it on a primary cell uh, culture, so some monocytes. And there are some plates uh, which are coated with polylysin. So basically you have to add this step, which is kind of complicated. Uh, you have to centrifuge the plates to make it adhere to the plate, and then you can exactly do the same assessment. The problem on that platform is that we don't have an automated uh, centrifuge, so if you, you have to let them sediment, basically. So this is indeed more complicated uh, to, to, to do. But this, like I said, this platform is really uh, flexible and we can add any other device. Maybe Beckman will offer us uh, a centrifuge, an automated centrifuge to, to do it. So yeah, indeed, we could improve this. <laughs> Okay, if we thank you very much, Alan.